today's video, as you guessed it, is all about coils. Making coil. So I'm in the tent to carry on to give myself confidence to make YouTube video again because it's been a while, as I said in my previous video. I thought I'd take it easy and stick to stuff that I know very well. Also, I have quite a few new Patreon that just came in, so it's timely to go over this stuff because I usually get those questions all the time anyway. So it's kind of a double banger. Finally, for the one that have been to the channel for quite a while, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, wiring and orienting the coils a little bit later on in the video. So either you can skip to there right away if you know how to do this, or you can hang out for the, uh, for the action. Okay, so this is the rig I use. Um, I found this guy online on AliExpress, on Amazon actually. Uh, I'll leave the link in the, uh, in the comment below. This is a propane bottle. Don't ask me why it's white. I have no idea where I found a white one. Usually they're green. And what you see on top is wax paper. It helps me basically uh, remove the coil without too much, too much hassle. This right here is a socket set that fits into uh, the mail-in portion. Let me take it off and show you. So this is just a simple bit that you find. And what I used here, I used an epoxy and I used this socket set that fits perfectly on top of it. The size of it is exactly 24 millimeters. So that's a 24 mil socket that goes into this. That's just a normal chalk. And I build this little contraption in the back with a rod to hold my spool. And that's pretty much it. Now, right here at the end, I usually just put in my drill. My drill goes right on where this goes. One thing that's really important, guys, make sure your drill goes on low speed, not high speed. Something that's really important is I created some kind of break right here with this some friction. What it does, it slows down the spool before I, I quit. Also, when you get close to the end, slow the drill right down and have some tape ready pre-cut to wrap your coils. That's gonna save you so much grief. Okay, so then you're just gonna have to be patient and start making coils. I like to put my headphones on, listen to a good audio book, and then I just go from there. Now, I spend most of my electrical life uh, doing high voltage and a lot of taping stuff, so like I have the muscle memory to do these guys really quickly. But don't worry, take your time, just go around, and then you'll, you'll get it done. We use magnet wire, 22 gauge, um, that's what I like to use. That's what the mat is, is done for, to go with the power supply and the ZK and the Naxxion. Then pile them all up, get them all done, be patient, and just listen to a book. So now, 
that you saw me burning them the end I removed the varnish of it and then I used the sandpaper to clean them up you are well on your way now to finish your harness you're gonna have to grab some lead I usually make mine about 16 inches long to go between coils on the big mat and about six inches on the mini mat and then you gotta twist the end together The reason why I twist the end together is because the next step, when I solder them together, um, I don't have to worry about putting them and touching them and holding them. Everything is together, you'll see. So after you twist your wire together, you give it a bit of solder to make the connection permanent. And one thing I always do before I finish anything, I check. I check my resistance between my coil to make sure that the connection is good. You should get, as per what that's on the screen, there are 3.3 ohm for two coils. Those are the two that go in the pillow. And then you should get about 6.6 .6 ohms for the four coils in series. Those are the one on each side of the mat. And then you saw there for the five coil that goes in the middle. If you're building a mini mat, you'll be using three coils. So you're looking at about 3.3 uh, .3 ohms per coil. So it'll be like 9.9 .9 ohms. Securing your wire to your coil is crucial. Okay. The magnet wire does not like to be bent over and over again. So secure them to your coil so only the flexible wire is exposed. Plus it's a good finish to do. Okay, so now we are at the final stage before we have to orient our coils. You got your coils all pre-made, they're ready to go. So if you got the big mat, you need the 15 coils with the switch, or if you got the mini mat, you need the six coils. So you got your coil build. I didn't finish taping those guys. I gotta check the homage on it. And then if you gonna figure out the orientation of your coil before you put them in. So if you look here, I mark them to be north this way. You also have to mark the wire that says plus on it. Because if you don't do that, you're going to get yourself in trouble. How? Let me show you. Okay, here's a funnel mistake that a lot of people will do and they're not even aware they're doing it. So you bring your coil to test them. So you put your coil on your desk, you wire up your coils, your two series in parallel. You bring a wire or this directly into your ZK or your testing device, whatever you, you got going. Cause I have a ZK PP2 that I use for testing all the time. Let me grab it. So I basically have this and then I have quick connector right here. So I can test my coils all the time. As you can see, I put the plus in here, right? And I'll put that in here like this. I'll put this one over here. I energize that with my power supply. Okay, I'll take that off just so it's not so busy in here. And then I energize my coils. And then whichever technique you use to figure out, like you put, put the coil on top of each other, whichever way you want to do it. Or if you have a gauze meter that tells you the north south, that's another way to do it. You can do it with your phone too. And you can, like I talked about a lot of those. So if you're interested, uh, just go on the Patreon. And we, cut, we you can reach me and I can help you out. Now you got all that. You test a bunch of coils, and then you take them apart. For whatever reason because you're like you're gonna store them gonna move them around and everything else okay then you come into you install them in your mat and if you don't have this end marked right here the which one was plus you may end up 
put in your coils like this. And then you put what used to be negative, now you put it with a positive. So you'll be flowing backwards into the, the bottom coil. So that means like you can have north here and south here, even though you marked them all up and everything was good, right? So that's a mistake that happens a lot. And I know manufacturers, even though the coils are marked in the mat, I've seen it where the coils are marked north and south, plus and minus, but they're not hooked together properly. So even though they're all facing the way up, they make their series and their parallel wrong. So mark the end, which one is the plus? Better take that off so I don't think that this coil hasn't been checked. This last little bit I just showed you there is very, very important, okay? You're doing everything right every step of the way to mess it up at the end. Another way to make sure that you don't make a mistake, especially if you're just doing one. This is the beauty about us. We're not like a big giant manufacturer, right? Place the coil into your, after you take the homage and everything, everything is good and you get them all secured. Don't worry about marking them or nothing like that. Put them inside your mat. Don't tape them out. Do all the wiring. Just finish everything. Just don't tape your coils down. Turn it on and then check the polarity of every coil and then flip them as needed and then tape them down. Then you know 100% for sure you're good to go.